Here we are back in New York City painting in plein air for the week of May 6th through the 13th. And uh, we moved over to the uh, east side of the park, the Conservation Pond, uh, where we see uh, an open area, Hans Christian Andersen statue looking towards a boathouse. And the pond is just beautiful. There's um, intermittent light. Uh, clouds are threatening, starting to come in a little bit. But momentarily, we see these spots of light um, coming through the trees, landing on the pond, giving us great reflections. So I feel this is a good, this is a good reason to do a painting. I love the reflections. I'm going to be putting my uh, horizon line rather high in the piece and focusing on uh, a couple boats moving across the water, a small family. This is very um, in line with what we're seeing today. Lots of families out having fun and enjoying the park, which is uh, just the perfect place for the plein air painter. And so I'm going to develop this sketch, which was done on my iPad, uh, into a painting. This is the, the finished piece, and I just want to point out a couple of things in thinking about uh, composition. I decided early on to title my piece Reflecting on the Pond, um, and I want to emphasize the reflections and emphasize the beautiful light that we saw this day and kind of um, give a little bit of a story of figures uh, enjoying this this moment, uh, watching the boats, having a good time. And so that uh, influences a lot of the decisions that I make before I start the painting. Uh, one of them being how much space to give to the reflections, how much space to give to the upper part of the painting. You saw in my design that I placed the horizon or the eye level very high in the painting. I'm also working on a square format which invites uh, the artist to play with composition a little more and <clears throat> once I uh, um, in keeping uh, in line with my title I'm putting um, a couple of boats my first sketch included three boats and it started to f it felt at the end a bit crowded to me so I made the adjustment to put a couple of boats coming across and give a little larger presence to the child reaching for the boat and the family behind. I start with these light warm hues. I start in the upper part of the painting because I want to get this placed in advance of painting the reflections below. The reflections below I feel are going to represent a challenge. In my watercolor plan I want to do it all at once which means keeping this whole lower two-thirds of the painting wet and working it while it's wet. This means I'm going to be using a wet into wet mixtures, dry into wet mixtures, placing color, bleeding color, working it at an angle so that the color flows towards the bottom, working with a large brush. So I need to see the areas that I'm working around, the two sailboats and a piece of sky at the bottom, some of the reflections of people. And uh, I knew that I believe, you know, when you're when you're starting out on a painting, you need to identify areas that might be problematic, areas where you want to either slow down and take your time or mix plenty of colors so that you're not going back to mix uh, other colors. So this is one of those areas where it's a very large part of the painting. It's the, maybe the most important part of the painting is uh, these areas of reflections. I feel I need to do this all in one go and so I have my spray bottle in hand I've mixed up a lot of color in advance so that I can kind of attack this painting and work with it while it's wet um, in watercolor we can um, we can manipulate the wash as long as it's glistening as long as that wash is very wet we can add we can color, we can add water, we can uh, manipulate edges, we can do all sorts of things and it's going to dry beautifully. Uh, we run into a danger if the, if the wash starts to dry on us and we, we add color in, into that. So we have a, a wash that's lost its glisten perhaps, lost its shine and it's still 
appears wet. It still looks to be manageable, but in fact it's half dry or partially dry. And this is a dangerous state to work in because um, you encounter accidentals, you create balloons and cauliflowers and things of this nature, and uh, you can lose the continuity of a, of a beautiful wash. So I'm very conscious of that and trying to manage this all in one go. And um, what helps me is to be kind of uh, quick with the washes. And I can stay, I can move quickly if I've prepared the color ahead of time in my palette if I keep that spray bottle and keep hitting the, the wash with a little bit of spray and keep adding a color uh, to the point where I feel, okay, this is close enough, let's let it dry. And I'm coming to that point pretty quickly. I'm coming to the point you can see the deep reflections. I've added some real intense uh, darks of ultramarine blue, a little bit of neutral tint, the blackish hue. There's a lot of warm color in the underpainting of yellow ochre and um, even, even a bit of alizarin crimson and burnt sienna into the, uh, a reflected tree area. As we look at it though, it looks pretty um, ordinary, like it's just one color that's bleeding this way and that. But as it dries, these colors will come out a little more and uh, hopefully give us a nice uh, finish. So you see me working now with a smaller brush, touching up uh, some edges, giving uh, the boat some direction, refining the edges of the sail, uh, hitting some of the edges of the reflections so that they bleed. Doing it with a small brush because I don't want uh, to get um, too much water on the paper at this point. I feel like the basic wash is close enough. And I say close enough because uh, you, I can always see things, and every artist can always see things that are not exactly uh, according to plan, not exactly what you wished for. Um, maybe you see, oh, if I added this, it would be much better, or better. But I'm trying to hold back on that thought. And if I can say close enough, then I'm happy, and I will move on to the next stage. The next stage is going to be above the painting, adding some shadows, refining figures. There's a bit of a boathouse behind everything, um, benches, trees, etc. There's a lot going on in the upper area, but in this painting I feel I've had to <clears throat> isolate the lower section uh, to start with, and then uh, once it's dry, or once uh, I feel it's at a point where I can move. I'll go up to the upper section and uh, start to address that area. Maybe it seems like a, a reverse logic to work in the reflections before you work above. And perhaps it is. Um, but uh, I felt a, a motivation to keep, keep going. And in terms of sequence, uh, the upper section was drying while I'm painting the lower section. Now the lower section is pretty well established and I can move uh, into the upper section. So I'm starting with a, a similar palette, uh, a lot of blues and burnt siennas onto this yellow, yellowed background. I'm going to be painting uh, around the boats, the tops of the boats, around figures, so I'm, I'm using a little bit of a smaller brush and trying to lay the color in with some precision, some awareness of the overhead canopy of leaves, um, uh, extending it to the right and left uh, along the cast shadows on the park benches and so on. There's just a lot going on above the, the scene and at the same time I'm working around some pretty delicate areas so that's why I'm using a smaller brush. I'm trying to be as painterly as I can but uh, all these uh, cut arounds interfere with that. It's one of the things that is bothersome when you're working with watercolor you have when you're putting on washes and isolating light and dark areas you do have to work around um, areas like this and 
I find it disconcerting because it interrupts the, the broad sweeps that I like to make with the brush and the, and the um, lively brushwork that I enjoy so much. However, uh, we have to do it, so that's what I've done to the right side, and this will extend over to the left side as well. But you notice how I've kind of isolated that uh, overhanging branch. I'm going to leave it yellow because I've got a lot of yellows working in the painting. Um, it corresponds to the uh, dappled light that we're seeing. Paint the tree that's behind a little darker. Uh, it's kind of a simplified version of what we saw, but I feel it's going to be effective. And one of the things when we're when we're working with moving objects, and today is, I mean, this is always a problem when you're working outside, is uh, kind of establishing uh, an idea before you start with the watercolor. Uh, as I've mentioned earlier, I like to set the title. Uh, it seems maybe arbitrary, but it does give all your efforts a little bit of focus. So knowing that I want to focus on the reflections and the activity that it's creating those reflections has helped me create this composition. It's also helping me to focus on the, um, the mid-ground, the, the strong uh, uh, characters of tilting boats, standing figures, and also helped me to complement that with some overhead light, some structures, a feeling of that beautiful sweeping line of the pond. Uh, which as a design element is just fantastic, the way the line curves in and out. And um, the, the artist can use this as a lead-in, as a way to lead the eye. So some of the, the finishing parts got edited from, not edited, but uh, were not recorded. I apologize for that. We moved to the finished image. You can see how I've refined the smaller areas and uh, joined the mid-tone, join the darks, and get it to try and achieve a feeling of luminosity. So what, uh, what I'd like to say in all this is very often you have uh, weather conditions or you have moving objects, and to set your plan early and to keep that in the forefront of your mind, uh, a title is very helpful to do this. Also helpful to decide how to edit uh, what to include, what to focus on, what to leave out, what to minimize. Uh, the strokes that you see uh, placed on the pavement, the strokes that you see coming through the trees, the strokes that you see on the sails of the boats, these are all directed to give that feeling of overhead light, beautiful shadows, and all of the wet on wet work that you saw uh, is done to create this uh, sense of reflections, the beautiful deep reflections that uh, we watched um, in front of our eyes uh, on this pond. So I hope that's helpful uh, in getting outdoors and studying your subject, thinking about what you want to portray, what grabs your attention, devising a watercolor plan, something that you can do uh, in steps is very helpful so that you can manage it. And then stop thinking and just paint.